Cuate from La Rana, is another major historical Mexican Mafia player who became involved in much of the backstabbing, inner squabbling, and internal scandals that rocked the fellas beginning in the 1990s. While housed in the LA County Jail's 1750 high power M gang module, Guate attempted a power play against fellow members Henry Carlos, aka Indio, Alfred Sandoval, also known as Chato, and a few others. Indio caught Guate in the shower completely naked and stabbed him multiple times but did not finish him off. On May 20th, 1990, Indio was caught at the LA Criminal Courts building and stabbed 24 times by Rene Boxer Enriquez in retaliation. He too survived. Joe Morgan intervened and gave Cuate and Indio a pass for their politicking and peace was temporarily restored. In 1995, while sailed up at Pelican Bay with fellow member Dashing D. Castrejon, Cuate attempted to strangle D to death and they engaged in a fierce battle after D broke the stranglehold. Wow. As the two caught their breaths, both men physically spent. Alfie Sosa came to their cell door and persuaded the mortal enemies to shake hands and bury the hatchet. I'm, although they mutually agreed, the mid 1990s continued the internal Mexican mafia power struggles with Cuate Grajeda plotting assassination attempts against many fellow carnales. After a unanimous consensus, M members decided Cuate was a terminal cancer who had to go to Brazil. His twin brother Wino and brother Cherilo, also members, were approached by the fellas and asked if they were willing to take out Cuate if given the opportunity. Both passionately agreed to take out their brother. Cherilo even became vocal about Cuate having to go. The performance was short-lived and the brothers would join ranks with each other. The three were placed on the MS hit list and on disregard status. Mm, and listen to this. The fellows extended the hit status to the Grajeda brothers' sons and nephews. All the Grajedas are currently housed on keepaway status from the Mexican mafia, and there are no plans to release them to the general population due to the threat against their lives. M experts collectively agree there is no political recovery for the Grajedas within the Mexican mafia. Mm. The game Daniel Grajeda once professed to be a master at, M politics, finally consumed him and all of his siblings. The Grajeda brothers, harbor area gang territories, and other street interests were inherited by and divided between M members Gabriel Sleepy Huerta and Emiliano Tonito Lopez from Wilmas the same Tonito Lopez that was later executed by the fellas. And that right there goes to show you how the Mexican mafia gets down. And like I said, man, that's an amazing story that Mundo told. It's about these brothers. One brother was in bad standing. So the other two brothers were asked by the La inmate to assassinate their own brother. They agreed, but then they, you know, they got cold feet and they, you know, left the gang and uh, they, they turned over to the other side, protective custody. But what would you do in a situation like that? You understand? And this is what you call politicking. This is when a member of La Ime thinks that they can outmaneuver everybody else and, and get on top. But La Ime doesn't doesn't tolerate that. They'll they'll balance you out in a, in a heartbeat, you know? And the level of uh, politicking is similar to what we see in Washington, D.C., you know, except these guys are actually, you know, violent. But it's the same thing, just, you know, without the violence in Washington, D.C. And, um, yeah, man, it's just when you think about these things, man, just like uh, the mafia, the Italian mafia, they will literally ask you to kill one of your own family members, not because they want, you know, not because they derive some sort of sick pleasure from it, but because they're all about efficiency. You know, they're not trying to shoot you out of a car or make a big scene. They want to eliminate you without suspicion. They don't you don't they don't want you to see it coming. And uh, that's how the Italian mafia got down. It was all about efficiency. And I guess that's how La Ime operates. But yeah, man, it just goes to show you, man, L.A. County Jail is a, is a crazy place. They have a gang module for all the different cars, all the different groups. I mean, the Mexican mafia has their own unit. 
And in that unit, politicking goes down, you know? And like Mundo said, Cuate was, was plotting the assassination of his Laime brothers so that he could take over, you know what I mean? But they plotted on his death. And the guy who they sent, you know? <laughs> Hold on, man. You heard the story, man. You heard the story. All the, 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 the guy who inherited everything from them, you know, because once they left the gang and went to PC, they had to give up their drug operations and all their financial endeavors. The guy who inherited all of that was killed himself by Laime. So, yeah, man, think twice about crime, man. Do not get yourself involved because you don't know if you're really ready to be in the pen with these animals, man. And when I say animals, I mean these guys don't have any problems killing you. It's business. And if you aren't conditioned that way, and you're not a sociopath, psychopath, then I don't think you'll be able to survive amongst these men. You understand? And like I said, man, Laime is very organized, very structured. Like I said, once these guys became no good, these brothers, their operations were transferred to another another brother, another Mexican Mafia member. And that Mexican Mafia member eventually got into bad standing, so they took his operations and gave it to somebody else. You understand? And man, it's crazy, man. It's a few Mexican mafia members who lived until their 80s and 70s and stuff like that who remained in good standing. But the whole purpose of Mundo uh, making this video is to show that a large percentage of these guys end up getting killed by their own brothers because they end up in bad standing. It's very rare to find a Mexican mafia member who actually, uh, you know, lived to old age or died while in good standing. And, you know, the vast majority of these Mexican Mafia guys actually died of overdoses from heroin. When you watch these videos by Mundo, he actually goes through the list of everybody who died from, uh, you know, heroin overdoses. I think this might be the video right here. But he goes like, uh, you know, this brother right here died of heroin overdose. This brother right here died of heroin overdose. That's the culture of Laime. The Mexican Mafia culture seems to embrace heroin. And I guess it's because these guys are locked down in prison. And uh, they have access to it. They're making money from it on the yard. They're selling it to other inmates. And I guess they have such a large supply. That's one of the things that get them through their bid, get them through their bid, their life bid, because these guys got life sentences. And I guess that's that makes their uh, bid easier. You understand? So, well, hold on for one second. Isn't my job to talk about? Hold on. Are you interested in P L W A P? Is the acronym and designation? Nah, man, I'm not going to try to find it, but yeah, man, if you watch Mundo's videos, you'll stumble across it. It's a video where he's talking about uh, the deaths of Mexican mafia members, and every single one of them died from heroin overdose, you know, or heroin related illnesses or something like, or something like that. You no, know? crazy. Salute to Mundo. I love what he's doing. He's doing a very positive thing. He's mem he's creating a memoir of his life, and basically he's creating a historical record of the Mexican Mafia. He's documenting a period of time in the 20th century that some people might not believe years and years from now. People are going to look back at, you know, the 20th century Mexican Mafia as, as, as something crazy, you know, and Mundo is 71 or 72, and I think it's good that he's documenting all this stuff, man, because when he's lo no longer here, all of this information will be available, you understand? Peace.